Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Uh, before we wrap up this morning, we're moving into another conversation this morning on Nigerians stranded in other countries. And this time our focus is in uh, Saudi Arabia. 384 stranded Nigerians returned recently from Saudi Arabia, reports say, and of course that is from NIDCOM and uh, the chairman, Abike Dabiri Arewa, that as many as 600 of them were stranded there for as uh, many as seven months. Uh, we are speaking this morning with the personal assistant to the NEEDCOM chairman on new media, Mr. Akimbola Akimboye. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to start with, you know, talking about the um, um, process of bringing these uh, Nigerians back. Um, you know, what, what did NEEDCOM have to go through and, you know, what are the reasons it took this uh, much time? to uh, get them back in the country. OK, thank you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, for correction, my name is Akin Boye Akin Shala. Apologies. I'm the Noted. PhD chairman and name here. OK, so um, I, I believe we all saw you on Twitter and on other social media. So when she saw you, we reach out to her and um, we engage with our, of course, you know, we are under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so we reach out to our ministry too. So we are able to collaborate with the mission in Saudi Arabia. So it's a collaboration between, between the mission, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and NICOM to bring them back home. Okay. And, so and yesterday we were at the all right, go ahead. Just go we ahead. We received um, 384 of them. Um, this morning, by 11 o'clock, we'll still be at the airport to receive the other 500 slots that will be coming today. All right. So we find that NIDCOM continually, you know, it repatriates hundreds and hundreds of Nigerians. And I'm sure over time, it's been up to thousands of Nigerians, you know, from Saudi Arabia. I would like to kindly ask you, what are the push factors or the pull factors that makes so many Nigerians, you know, want to, you know, search for greener pastures in Saudi Arabia? Okay, thank you so much. Um, let me speak generally first. Uh, this is not a matter of um, Saudi Arabia alone. Like, you know, during the last uh, lockdown, we were engaged in a lot of evacuation. You see a lot of news from evacu evacuation from different parts of the world, from US, from UK, from Saudi, from UAE. Now, let me make something clear here. Those guys actually went, you know, a lot of them, I'm, I'm speaking generally now, a lot of them went on vacation, a lot of them as students. So different reasons. So it was because of the lockdown. The lockdown actually, you know, they, they were stranded and um, they needed to come back home. So that was when the federal government walked the first evacuation house. Now, talking particularly about this set of people that just came back now, a lot of these guys, we interviewed them, a lot of them have been, in, you know, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia in particular, for a very long time. This is not a matter of they are just going. You know, I spoke with a particular person yesterday. He said he has been there for over eight years. Now, this is the thing. Coronavirus actually play a lot of roles. And you know, this is post-COVID-19. And even before this time, the chairman has been saying this, that it is tougher to be an illegal migrant out there. You know? So, you know, a lot of these guys, they are actually working in hotels, you know, uh, all those small, small, you know, businesses in uh, Saudi Arabia. Now, because of the lockdown and because many businesses, you know, they lost uh, sales, so a lot of them don't even have where to stay. A lot of these guys are just some of those people that are, you know, engaging in small, small businesses and some of them are housemates. So they are masters can no longer pay their salary. So they have to go home. They are out of jobs. So okay. it is tougher to so be how about... an illegal migrant. Now, okay. and the chairman has always been saying that, see, come, home is home. 
you can come home and start all over again. We've had cases of Nigerians that we've, um, you know, brought back. There was a particular guy that we brought back from um, Kenya. He served his jail term. It was um, an issue of illegal uh, migrants. So he served his jail term. And the guy is back home with our collaborations with uh, Smedan and other other things. He has started, and now he owns a company in Abuja here. Wow. So we are saying that it is tougher to be an illegal migrant. This is post, post COVID 19. Okay, so can I ask you, saying. these, these migrants so it's that are. It's not a matter of they just went and they okay. are just going. So All a right. lot of them have been in Saudi Arabia for, for, for long. Apologies, we're really short on time here. So I'd like to ask you, these migrants that have been repatriated to the country, you know, if, during COVID and even before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, what are the processes being put in place for them to be reintegrated, rehabilitated, and even for self-isolation since, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is still on? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, answering this question, this particular set of people that just came and the people that will be coming to this, they are, they are in uh, the government facility in the uh, Hajj camp. So they will be quarantined for 14 days. That is in line with the NCDC. Now, after then, the government, like uh, yesterday, we have um, 36 but diaspora focal point officers. So the Kano diaspora focal point officer was around with us yesterday. He brought, she brought a, a message from the governor. So the governor, they, they have a lot of things in place for them. At least they can start all over again. You know, we are collaborating with Smedan, we are collaborating with the uh, NDD to give them a lot of them. You know, there was a particular woman that came from South Africa, you know, during the xenophobic attack. Today, she also runs a business. So there are a lot of federal government, you know, um, programs that it, they, they will help them, you know, that's a special uh, request from the chairman. And we are collaborating with a lot of those uh, government agencies to make sure that they are okay. And um, this particular set of people that came from uh, Saudi Arabia, we will be meeting with them, with uh, the Astra Focal Point of that. The governor, we have to do a lot of them, and they have already promised them. So I can assure you that it is time for them, and they, they have that ability to start all over again. After all, they are not criminals. Mm. They went out there, you know, seeking for greener pastors. So they are not criminals. So that's it. All right. Good to know that uh, NIDCOM is going to repatriate. He said about five to 600 more migrants uh, to Nigeria today. Uh, well, we do hope that, you know, like you said, there are programs that we enable them to get back on their feet as they return to the country. Thank you very much. This is the much we can take on uh, this segment right now. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. All right, so Plus Trending is next. Yes, it's still about this issue, this big issue about the wrestling match at uh, the, you know, the House of Representatives. So we have our in-house social media manager, Bookie November, coming in in just a minute to discuss that with us.